Hello everyone and welcome back to this new episode of the Future Learning series. In this episode I'm going to introduce relation networks. I will give you first of all an overview of the algorithm, then we are going to see uh, some PyTorch code and in the end some pros and cons of this method. So relation network for future learning have been introduced in this article that uh, has been presented as CVPR in 2018. You can find the uh, the article for free on archive. You can find also the code of the first author of the paper on GitHub. I invite you to give a look to both of them if you want to have a good understanding of relation networks. We'd like to start describing uh, what are relation networks and when they have been introduced. So actually the first in uh, introduction of the relational network has been done in 2017 in an article presented at NIPS by some folks at uh, DeepMind and you can find the article on archive for free. And the idea was to answer this kind of relational questions. So if I'm asking you, look into this image, uh, are there any rubber things, in this case, these black lines that have the same size as the yellow metallic cylinder as this one? So to answer this question, you have to compare each one of these black line rubber bands with the cylinder, the yellow one, and it means that you have to perform a comparison between all these objects, okay? Instead, if I ask you something like this, what is the size of the brown sphere? So in this case, this is the brown sphere. To answer this question, you can perfectly answer this question without looking to any other object. You just can look to the brown sphere and you can estimate, you can give a guess the size of the brown sphere. And uh, the idea uh, behind the relation networks is to create a relation module like this one, and this is generally parameterized by two sets of weights and two functions. These are two different neural networks, f and g, in this case, parameterized by two different sets of weights, uh, phi and theta. And uh, if you have a set of objects like those ones, you can consider this one as different objects, what you're going to do with the first network is just to encode these uh, two objects in a latent space, you're going to pair them, and then the second network is going to estimate what's the relation between these two objects, in this case, E and J. And you're going to repeat this with all the available objects you know. And the idea is to learn these two sets of parameters such that you are going to have a good estimate of the relation between the objects. I'm going now to see how this idea has been used in uh, future learning. In this case, we are in the five way and one shot setting. It means that we have five images. Uh, it means we have five classes, just one image per class, as you can see. This is the query. So in this case, we have a new image and we have to understand to which one of these five classes this new image belongs to. The answer in this case is pretty easy, this one, but we have to teach our network to do it. And we're gonna see now what are the different stages of our relation network. The first stage is this first neural network that is going to encode in a Latin space all the different images. Then once we encode it, we are going to perform in a second stage a concatenation, and we will see soon what does it mean. The third stage analyze these concatenations and will give us a relation score, that is this one, okay? And finally, we have a loss function. In this loss function, we are going just to minimize a specific loss such that these parameters of the two neural networks are uh, moved towards um, a minimum loss. So first of all, I would like to show you how relation net differ from protonet. So in a protonet, you have your input image x that as I explained you in the previous episode, it's going to be compressed inside a Latin space and it's represented generally with a vector z. In relation net instead, we still have our input image x. We still have a compression, st a compression stage. The difference now is that we don't have any more a vector z we have a certain amount of future maps 
and this is actually a stack as you can see of future maps and then we have another stage we have another network that is going to analyze these future maps and it's going to produce an output r that is the relations between uh, the stack of future maps so as you can see we have another stage while in protonet we have just one stage of compression and then a linear layer here with the output here we have two stages a first stage that compress and then uh, creates a sort of concatenation of the different pairs and then we have another stage that's going to analyze these pairs and produce a relation score now if we're going to see this example here you will see that each image is going to be compressed with this neural network and for instance this kind of purple uh, class is going to be compressed in this set of future maps while this one the yellow query image is going to be compressed in this set now since we want to compare this query image with all the classes we are going to concatenate the query future maps with all the others in this case we will have five different pairs right once we have these pairs we pass them through another neural network it's the second stage and this neural network in the end is going to produce through a, a linear layers a relation score once we get a relation score that is generally between 0 and 1 with 0 means no correlation between the pairs 1 means correlation and in this case the purple class and the yellow class they are pretty different so we can imagine that here we have a very small score 0 0.1 while since this class uh, this image belongs to this class we will have for this specific output a value that is very close to 1 let's say 0 0.9 now you will have other values here for the other outputs and what you're going to do is you're going to compare this relation sc uh, score with a one not vector labels it's just the labels and since we know the labels of this uh, task in this case of both support and query we can have a one out vector representing the label of our our example in this case and what you do in the last stage is that just to compare the one out vector with the relation score uh, you should not get scared by this notation this bold one here this is just an indicator function the indicator function is equal to one if this uh, equality is satisfied otherwise it would be equal to zero and this is basically another way to express the one not uh, encoding so we are going to compare our relation score between our pairs with uh, our uh, one not uh, label and this is done through um, an msc loss as you can see here so this is just an msc mean square error loss between the score and uh, our labels now if you're going to check the paper you will find this expression you should not get scared because it's actually pretty easy to analyze and what you find here is just these two values as you can see this is just the first stage so we are encoding xi xj if we call this xi I call this xj for the moment so we are just calling two times these networks and we are going to encode the first image we're going to encode the second image and this c here is just represent our concatenation this is just stage two and then finally we have another stage three that is just uh, another step in a second neural network so we are the second stage of the relation network and this will give us of course the scores is four right and then we are going to pass this through the step five that is our loss that we want to minimize all right let's give a look now to some code this is what uh, how, how the network looks like in the paper we are going to analyze now the first stage and this first stage is just made by four convolutional layers and these actually are a conv2d followed by a batch norm, a relu, and a max pool operation. And these are repeated four times. And so in the first stage is very, very simple. We are just going to repeat this 
a sequence of layers such that we have an output. Now remember that the output here is just a stack of feature maps, right? And you have it for both the first image and the second image. You will find the code on the original repository, the first author of the paper, and in this particular case, I'm going to show you the minimage net train one shot pi. So the, we are uh, in the one shot case. After the first stage, we have a feature concatenation that we will see in the next slide. And then we have the second part of the network. So the second part of the network is pretty simple. We have two convolutional stage and then two fully connected layers. As you can see, the uh, convolutional layers have the same structure. So we have a COM2D, batch norm, ELU and max pool and we do it two times. Then we have the two fully connected layers, the green one here, and in the forward pass of this code, we are going to uh, repeat the convolution one, convolution two, and then you will have the two fully connected layer. As you can see here, we, we are using a sigmoid so that the output will be squashed between zero and one. That is our relation score in this case we want the relation score to be between 0 and 1, so we are going to use a sigmoid to do this. Let's see now how the concatenation actually works. So to concatenate, we have to, first of all, to perform an encoding of our support and query, and we are going to do it here. In support, this is the query, and as you can see, you can recognize the support because this has shape five. So we are in a, a five way one shot. It means we have five images. While we have 20 query images. So we want to estimate um, to which class 20 new images belongs to. This is done in the first stage. Okay, this part here. Then now we have to concatenate the two uh, future maps. Remember that these are a stack of future maps. You can do this in this stage, okay? And as you can see, we are taking this. First of all, we are going to reshape them so that they have a, a suitable shape. And then we are going to apply the cut, touch cut, this concatenation operator of the uh, simple features and batch features that are the support and query. We are going to concatenate them. And once we have concatenated them, we can use second stage that is just a single line of code this one where we are going to take these relation pairs we are going to pass it through the last stage of the network we are going to get some relations that are basically the relation score that we get here this will be between 0 and 1 as I told you because there is a sigmoid function then we can get our one not labels and we can apply the loss just in the very last stage here applying the loss function, in this case is a MSC loss between the relations that we got at this stage and the one not labels that we got here. Okay, so what are the pros and cons of this approach? Let's start with, with the pros and you see this kind of network generally they perform pretty well. If you see uh, most common benchmarks you will see the relation network are pretty good. Moreover they are pretty good also with deeper backbones, as you can see in the article, uh, this article here. And they are not good as protonets with deeper backbones, but they are still pretty good. And then they can also be adapted to the zero shot setting. And this is also uh, has been presented in the original article. So you can give a look if you like. Let's see now some drawbacks of this approach. So first of all, as you may have noticed, we have another layer of complexity. So this architecture is generally more complicated and, uh, because you have a backbone and then you have a relation module. While in, in other approaches like, uh, like uh, protonets, you just have a backbone. Another drawback is that if you're going to apply a further adaptation on the test support set to perform well on the query set at test time, this will give just minimal improvements. This can also be uh, seen in this in this article. I invite you to give a look if you like. And so that's pretty much it. And I hope I give you a nice and short overview of relation networks. I invite you to read the original article. And if you have any question, just write it on the comments below. Thank you for watching. See you next time.